you uh, as a university uh, the first one among them all in Europe and in the world who have really close contacts to the Russian Orthodox academic theology. Uh, so you are really the leading ones. Now, could you say a few words about the uh, types of cooperation which you have with, uh, with the Orthodox Church and institutions? And perhaps to say also a few words of encouragement, suggestion, discouragement to some other uh, colleagues of yours who, who are Leuven or Sorbonne or whatever in this respect. Just a few words about Fribourg University. Fribourg University has been founded in 1889, which means in two years' time we have 125 years. We are very young compared to Louvain or to Cambridge or to Oxford. It was a university which was uh, founded by uh, a Catholic canton in Fribourg, um, in Switzerland, but from the very, very beginning, a university which was thought as a university international, open to the world, bilingual, and open also for Catholic confession, of course, but also for other uh, confessions. So this was Having now those contacts with the um, Russian Orthodox Church, um, with Eastern Europe, as you want to say, okay. is absolutely in the line of what we have been founded be uh, before uh, uh, 125 years ago. Okay. Um, it has become more specific because we have this theological faculty in which we have something like 20, 25 Orthodox students who are sent by their churches to continue their formation on the secondary and, and third uh, level. That's very important, but it's completely in accordance with the tradition of our university. I, I'm very pleased if you say we are the leader uh, of you those are. contacts. I think it was a work for many, many years just to build up something like uh, confidence, just to become familiar with each other and to say, well, if you send to us our students, if you give us the chance to accompany your students, we are going to take care of them and you can be really confident that we will help them to have a very good, a very well done uh, theological or even just human formation. So it took a lot of time just to gain this confidence of our Orthodox colleagues and now we are very glad uh, that we could do it and uh, our university is still open to a company and to open up for um, Orthodox students. I'm actually building up, uh, I would say, um, an aumonerie, I don't know how you say it in English, uh, a, cha a chaplaincy for Orthodox students uh, in our university with an Orthodox chapel and everything is settled now uh, to, to prepare so that not just Catholics and Protestants but also uh, Orthodox students would have uh, this possibility of being accompanied spiritually uh, by a chaplaincy in our university. It's, it's a big step forward uh, for the future. Did you notice some sort of uh, contemporary tendency to turn the universities in sort of a business uh, companies of organizations which are more concerned about sort of making their living than, uh, than sometimes even research uh, or teaching and which turns of course into the priorities which are being put into medicine or uh, applied science and very little into humanities one of which is of course theology as well but also uh, classical studies, oriental studies, which these days have real big difficulties of surviving. It's a very complex but very important uh, question, I think, for the future of our uh, universities as universities which have uh, a kind of a humanistic uh, approach to, to reality. Universities are not um, I would say entreprise uh, just 
to make money and, and, and to prepare people for the, for the, for the market, for the employ, employment. Employability is, is one of those keywords which is uh, usually used and uh, what is the, the word of your, of your university, employability? I would say no, it's, it's formation, it's educate people to become uh, responsible uh, actors in, in society. And this is uh, valuable for all, for theologians, for economists, for medical doctors and so on. So I, I stress, I insist very much on this integral humanistic formation within a European university. I think this is one of the main points. Of course, you have to, to, to make a little bit more effort to, to support uh, humanities because sometimes they are considered in society as a second class or lower class uh, science. I think it's a mistake because um, people need really uh, medical doctors who are also aware uh, of the fact that this patient is not just a, speci a specific form of illness but is a human person who is sick or an economist who is not just uh, a statistic um, um, norm or something like that but this is a person who is suffering because uh, he has no more employment. So just to stress on this integral humanistic uh, approach of society and of um, education, university education is absolutely crucial. As a university which has also a Christian background, uh, although we are not a ecclesiastical university, but we, from our tradition, we are deeply rooted in this uh, Catholic Christian uh, canton, uh, we have to, to make possible also that this aspect of our formation becomes really very much alive. And I never hide that I'm a priest and this is what I do as a rector of a university. As a rector of a university, it's maybe a little bit seldom, but I've been elected twice by the full uh, number of professors, representatives of students and uh, scientific collaborators because maybe some people start realizing also that as a theologian maybe I'm not not useful for ever <laughs> something else but it means as a theologian maybe someone notices that we can have as it were um, a sense for the common good a sense for the totality of the needs uh, within university, which are not just economical, strategic, financial needs, but needs also for what I would call an integral education, which is Christianly, Chris, from, from the Christian point of view, oriented towards uh, a good human, uh, good human values of brotherhood, of mutual understanding, and especially uh, to, to formate people who are for the future responsible for uh, our society, which is in many, many cases uh, in a deep, deep crisis, of course, and not just an economical crisis. And what, is, what are the signs of, uh, of another crisis, which is not economic crisis? You could, you could call it a crisis of values. Uh, I would rather say many people are, as it comes to, to face the future of our society, um, they feel discouraged. Uh, I, I do not want to use words of ethics or values, but I would say just to give them the sense of what is the future about and what is the sense of your life for the future. Just uh, to be responsible for, for next generations, to be responsible uh, for the whole of creation, to be responsible so that the common good uh, can be shared with those who have less than we have. We are in a very well, uh, well situated situation in Europe in spite of all discourse about crisis. But we have to share with 
other parts of the world which are in a very difficult situation. So just to, to encourage people to look beyond their own borders. Yes. Look beyond your own border and this is an, as well valuable for medical doctors, for economists, for lawyers, for theologians. Look beyond yourself. Uh, have the courage to be decentered, not yeah. just to think you are the center of the world. There are other people and live and work with the others. Yeah. This is my message uh, as a rector of our university. Yeah. It's an average university for Swiss understanding 10,000 students. Uh, it's a good university, a small country. Uh, we are a, a university with short distances. Everybody knows each other. Students with professors, rectors to the professors. We have direct contacts and it's possible to really to, to boost uh, this sense for uh, be responsible for the future. Look beyond yourself and share what you have with the others.